Now, people, there are spiritual encounters all throughout the Bible. Am I saying everybody's going to have them? But I'm going to tell you something about the chosen. They have them. Some of them have them and don't even realize that they're chosen. You know, there are preachers that are not in tune with the spirit. There are people that are not in tune with the spirit. All they know how to do is teach doctrine. That's it. They don't know the spiritual realm. Am I saying I got it figured out? By no means. But I know God spoke to me in the spiritual. And I accepted it. Because so many things he has told me has came to pass that it's ridiculous. You see, Moses had to accept that fact. Jacob had to accept it. Abraham had to accept it. Noah had to accept that he heard God's voice and he built the ark. What is God trying to tell you today? What has God been telling you year after year, day after day, that you're not being obedient to? Or you're doubting. Let's put it this way. I ain't gonna say you're not being obedient. You're doubting that it's him. Now, I'm going to tell you a few things that I've been hearing ever since I was little. And I tell people this because I believe God is trying to reach out to so many folks in the spiritual realm. But the devil has been clouding our spirituality. When I was growing up, I was always told, if you hear a voice call your name, that it was the devil calling you. That it was the devil. I heard, I read, I heard this so many times. They said, don't answer. And I've been hearing a voice calling my name since I was little. Ever since elementary school, middle school. And I've always never answered. I was like, man, I was told the devil was calling me, so don't answer. So I'm like, where does this stuff come from? Where do these old wives tales come from? I'm going to tell you right now. When you hear something calling your name, say, here I am. Speak, Lord. I'm telling you that because the word says it. Acknowledge something is calling you. Let's put it this way. I know some of y'all, what if it is the devil? It doesn't matter. Answer it. You're trying to become in tune with God's voice. But if you never answer, how can you ever come in tune with something you never answer? You never seek out. You see, Moses sought what was going on there. And when the Lord saw he had interest, everything started from there on out. But he had to contact the spiritual. God is a spirit. Jesus has always been a spiritual being. Especially to those in the Old Testament. Yes, he spoke through prophets and things like that. And he still speaks through people now. You think after the Bible was written, spiritual encounter stopped? Something is wrong with you if you think that. Stop listening to your preachers. I'm saying this because some of y'all preachers ain't trying to get y'all in tune with the spirit because they want your money. They want you in tune with them. They want you steady paying tithes. They ain't trying to get you to spiritually awaken. They want to keep you blind and dumb and deaf. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm talking all these things in spiritual eyes. They want to spiritually dumb. They want you spiritually blind. They want you spiritually deaf. You see, I want you to know what I know. And the only reason I know what I know is because I experienced spiritual encounters. God has told me things that have came to pass. And I tell people, I did a video about it not too long ago about my life. I, he told me so many things. I don't curse people. I don't. I know people probably thought if you read the Bible, it looks like Moses is cursing Pharaoh. Moses is not cursing Pharaoh. Moses is telling Pharaoh exactly what don't go down if he don't listen. 
the plan is the play is written. You see, he had opportunities for the play to go differently. Now let's go to the New Testament. I mean, to the the book of the prophets, Ezekiel. He said, "Go to all I send you, and say what I tell you to say. And if you don't say it, I will hold you accountable for their sins. But if you say it, you are free from that." Whether they turn from their evil ways or whether they don't. Now think about Moses. It wasn't said exactly like that, but it's the same thing. Moses, you got to tell Pharaoh, whether he listened to you or not, what I told you to tell him. You see, warning can go multiple ways. Actually, one or two ways. It's going to go, they're going to change. They're going to go further and are punished. With belong. How did he talk to him? Through a donkey. But he also talked to Balaam spiritually. He said, don't go. But Balak kept trying to buy Balaam out. So Balaam sat his ass and was going to a Balak. And an angel, a spiritual being, was sitting in the cut, waiting for him to cross a certain line. And the donkey saw it. So also you see that animals see spiritual things. You see it in YouTube videos and everything all over. Animals can see the spiritual realm. Animals are in tune with God too. Whether you want to believe it or not, or at least it's tuned with the spirit. So he started beating his ass. And the ass opened his mouth and said, why have you beating me? Am I not your ass? And then the spirit of the Lord opened up. If you would have walked any further, this angel would have sliced you down. Look at all these spiritual encounters in the Bible. And you think you can't have one. I know someone that told me they had a spiritual encounter when an angel guided them across the field. And when they tell me that, I believe them. I ain't even like, man, ain't no way that happened. Man, I know the spiritual realm is way deeper and wider and larger than what you see with your eyes. Spiritual encounters. Elijah, as Elijah, went over, was on the mountain. And one of the people who were with him were afraid. And Elijah said, be of good courage. There'll be more with us than there'll be against us. And the Lord opened his eyes and he saw the heavenly host floating around. Mm. Chariots of fire. The army of God on standby. Mm -hmm. And guess what? They're on standby for you too. If you accept it. If you accept it. Believing is seeing is not seeing and then seeing. You see, what did Elijah had to believe? Elijah had to believe that Elijah was endowed with the power of God in order to receive the same spirit. You see, if you read the story closely, Elijah tried to get Elijah to turn back so many times. Elijah like, no, I'm going. You see, that's that faith. That's that text. He's like, I'm going. And then Elijah said, if you see me a sin by the terror of the Lord, you will receive a double portion. But he was already seeking the spiritual realm because he knew Elijah was a man of God and he wanted what he had. And he got it. And he got double portion. Spiritual encounters throughout the Bible. Peter and one of the other disciples saw Elijah and Moses talking with Jesus. Spiritual encounters are all throughout the Bible. So you think God just said after the Bible was written, nobody has no more spiritual encounters. That makes absolutely no sense. Now the Bible says test the spirit to see if they're of God. That's why you need the Holy Spirit.
But there's a lot of false prophets, false teachers, and false, false miracle workers out there. But if you got God on your side, you can expose them. Guess who did a lot of that? The disciples. You see, they said there were exorcists during the times of Paul and Peter and them. And they saw Paul exercising the demon with the name of Jesus. But they were already exorcists. But I guess they wasn't. They probably were fakers. So they're like, we cast you out in the name of this Jesus Paul speaks of. So they used the name of Jesus, but they didn't know what it was all about. So it didn't work. It's a lot of people using Jesus' name, and it's not working. It's not doing a thing, because they don't even understand. They don't. The one man that was using sorcery bewitched the people. You see, you got two spiritual realms. Actually, you got one spiritual realm and one Holy Spirit. But God is the father of spirits. That's why the demons answered to Jesus. That's why they came and bowed down to Jesus. So in Jesus' name, we can cast out demons, which are what? Spirits. But there are evil spirits out there. But one holy. And everybody got to answer to him. So once you get in tune with the Holy Spirit, you have protection from all the evil ones. And the stronger you grow, the more spiritual you become. A lot of y'all are not spiritual yet. I done been to church after church after church after church and hardly none of them cast out demons. I don't see pastors doing it. That's why the churches are over flooded and overwhelmed by demonic entities and demonic influence because nobody is spiritual. I do not want to be over a church Unless I can cast out a demon. I'm just being real with you. If I can't cast out a demon, I don't need to be over nobody. A lot of y'all got pastors that can't even cast out nothing. That's what I'm praying for. And when I get there, I might get there. That's my goal. To cast out. To work in the spiritual realm. To have endless spiritual encounters. What he sent the disciples out to do? Cast out demons. How often do you see, cast, all you see is showmanship now. Nobody ain't casting nothing out because they ain't endowed with the Holy Spirit. He said, you would know them by their fruits. I don't see too many people bearing fruit, especially in the spiritual realm. I don't see too many people casting out demons in the spirit. I just don't see it. And I want to. But guess what? The more I want it, guess what? When the when you start lining up with the spiritual realm and God said you have not because you ask not because you ask amiss. So if you're seeking spiritual things, I guarantee you, according to the word of God, you will get it. If you seek it. Spiritual encounters. That's what the all the New Testament was all about. Going through, casting out spirits. You know, why is no change in the church? Because the pastors are spiritually blind. You got homosexuals running around, adulterers and fornicators just running around praising the Lord in the church. Oh, claim they praising the Lord. Playing church. Because if you endow with the Holy Spirit, he's going to start cleansing you. He's going to start making you a new person. That's why a lot of these churches are dirty. Because they full of demons. And I feel it when I go in some of them. Oh Lord. I ain't lying to you. Got no reason to. What that's going to do? Nothing. You see. I'm trying to do, go like the Bible says. I want the Lord to grow me into a spiritual house. And I want him to grow you into a spiritual house. So you got to be ready for spiritual encounters. You got to be ready to hear from God. So be ready. Ask for it. You're too busy asking for a new car. You're too busy asking for the new Jordans. You ain't seeking nothing spiritual. You don't want spiritual. You know, a lot of y'all are afraid of it. 
He said, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of understanding. Not the fear of demons. The fear of God is the beginning of understanding. The beginning of wisdom. I'm trying to tell y'all something this morning. Wake up and smell the coffee. You know, people, I do this because God opened my eyes. That's why I do this. And I like doing it. And I want to go as far as God wants me to go in the spiritual realm. You know, we was talking to me and a coworker of mine was talking about the two witnesses. And they're going to be endowed with so much spiritual power. And everybody that crossed them get crossed out. Let me tell you something, people. I want you to grow and to those demons and those devils that are attacking your soul will run when they see you coming. I'm just being real. Because you're going to be so filled with the spirit that they can't touch you. You can be in a, a room full of witches and warlocks and they can't do nothing to you. You see, y'all ain't understanding. The Lord said, be not unequally yoked with unbelievers. So what are you trying to do? Make believers out of them. But you know, I know everybody's not on that level or even trying to. Some people may never reach it. But you have your job and I have mine. And I'm going to end with this. Seek God means seeking spiritual encounters. And if you haven't accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, today is the time to start your process to start having spiritual encounters. Now, I'm not trying to have astral ejection, projection, and all this other stuff. I want whatever spiritual gifts that line up with the Bible to come into me and to come into you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, I come to you today in earnest prayer, Lord Jesus. As you touch person at the sound of my voice, Lord Jesus, send your Holy Spirit to comfort into our hearts and our souls. Open our eyes so we can see and our ears that we can hear the spiritual voice that is you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Short, simple, sweet. Have a blessed day.